Hi folks, welcome to Applying the Sword. I'm Micah Pilcher. I'm going to be reading today's blog just for smoothness sake. The other day I had a discussion with my brother Jordan, who is about to complete his master's degree in theology for what it's worth, and he and I were both lamenting the huge shift amongst Christian academics in America towards progressive creationism, textual criticism, and the general spirit of academic elitism. He and I were in agreement. We both also observe that those who make these mistakes oftentimes quote one of two men to support their views on many different issues. These men are St. Augustine and C.S. Lewis. My brother and I concluded that the reason that they so often latch on to these two is that they routinely commit the same mistake of evaluating their own opinions too highly. I, of course, am not pretending to rival the intelligence or accomplishments of either of these two men, who are both vastly superior to myself in both areas. But no one is above error and I believe that these two men have done a lot of damage to the kingdom, given their uh, powerful degree of influence. Remember, error breeds more error. Once you ever reach the point where you form an opinion, even from science, and then, after finding an objection to that opinion in the scripture, if your first, if your first response is to alter or explain away the infallible text instead of allow it to be the mirror discussed in James 1, then the door is left wide open for all forms of heresy to be entertained, sooner if not later. Lewis's intellect and fondness of philosophy, for example, led him to a belief in universalism and ecumenicalism. St. Augustine taught the regeneration of baptism, infant damnation, persecution of heretics, praying to the saints, which if you think about it is really just pious necromancy, the idea of the church state, and that women are, quote, bags of feces and urine, unquote. They could never have come to these conclusions if they had been truly Bible-based men. Now again, I'm not denying that these men did a lot of good. I myself quote Lewis, for example, from time to time. But as I said in my Bill Gothard video, it is necessary to eat the meat and spit the bones with all teachers, and to hold them accountable to the scriptures. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, and God still can speak through donkeys. So let's not commit the same mistakes that they did in excuse for their talents and their wisdom. Let's not allow ourselves to swallow the cyanide with the Kool-Aid. Let Scripture be our first and ultimate standard, and all other standards be subservient. Let Scripture define Scripture, and not allow the opinions of men to tell us what the Almighty God communicated to us. Remember, we see through a glass darkly for now. All right, well, you folks have a great day, and God bless.